What is up YouTube and how's it going? Today we're going to bring you a tour of our BNC deck as promised on my Minecraft Titanic, a project that's been going on for just over eight years. Right now we are as far forward on B deck that we can go, minus the exterior here. We've already seen the exterior and the bow, so now we're going to work our way on the inside. This is the forward portion of B deck, which contains a lot of first class cabins as well as some maid saloons and, and valets. So we're just going to kind of go through and show you. Here's one of those doors from a letter stream. Leads to a restroom. And then there's some blank stuff that leads to the expansion joints. So we're just going to move forward here. Most of these look the same. They're just a little bit <laughs> wonky as they kind of look like it would in Minecraft. Some of them are furbished better than others. It's just a lot of rooms. Again, there's so many cabins on this ship that just taking so much time to fill every single one of them is an immense amount of work for one person to do. So here you see an expansion joint. That's why this door looks like it leads to nothing. And that is so that the ship can flex. We already talked about that in a previous stream. Today I'm going to get a little bit more in detail and show you a little bit more of the fine details of what we've built and accomplished here. So we're moving forward. It's the same on the starboard side over there, but if you all would like, I can head over here and kind of show you. Ignore the green carpet. Again, there was nothing green that came up with Titanic like that. It was most likely going to be a white and black tiling that went through these cabins here as we're moving around the ship. So this is the forward B section. Here we are now entering where the staircase would be. This is just behind it. You're seeing the elevators. Here's one of the elevator shafts that are now open that you can see. I have a few of them open on other decks. You can kind of see them as they go up and down. They don't actually work because we don't have that ability in the console version, so we just kind of deal with it as we as we go. And here we are at the forward grand staircase. This led out to a promenade access, but really it wasn't traversed as this led to other cabins that direction. You can see the uh, Macy's cabin there, their private promenade through there. This would have been just an entry portal way to the ship here. So let's go ahead and work our way forward. That's supposed to represent a vent there. I tried to use what detail I could given the parameters of the game, so bear with me on that one. Last time we toured this side and we kind of saw one of um, uh, Bruce Ismay's rooms, the B-52, uh, 54, 56, which was in the movie housed by Rose. So here we are. This is the Macy's, Isidore and Edith Strauss. This is where they were. They both went down the ship, down with the ship. Um, beautiful story there is um, she refused to leave her husband in order to get in, get into safety. As she said, uh, where you go, I go, and stayed with him, and they both went down with the ship together. They were the founders of Macy's. They would have had one of these parlor suites, which was a series of several rooms that interconnected with one another. They would have had their own private bathroom, whereas some of the first-class passengers actually shared bathrooms. This would have been one of the bedrooms here. We're going to go back out into the hallway. So for the tile in here, this is what eventually all of it will look like. It's just to kind of make it look like that black tile. Again, we don't have that unless we get a texture pack in here, but getting it to the console version is <laughs> rather difficult, to say the least. So we're going to go over here and see uh, what a standard first class room would look like. It's got its own little fireplace there. Here you see I tried to add some curtain details, experimenting with some of the bed types that they might have. Here they can call the steward. That would lead out. And these rooms also would have been interconnected, however locked in between if your family wasn't staying together. But several families could stay together if they would like. And it's the same for all of these rooms moving forward. Here we'll go this way. Moving um, after the ship, sorry. And all the first class passengers would have had very similar accommodations depending on how much they paid for their tickets. As you can see, they are all inter interconnected here. So we're going to work our way towards the aft section of the ship here. Again, I'm not showing you all of them just simply because they all look the same and it would be kind of tedious to go into each room. So we're going to work our way over here and we are now at the aft grand staircase looking up at the dome. Now you can see my little symbol of a cherub there. It's not as beautiful as the real thing and we also don't have the honor and glory uh, woodwork back there that would have been crafted. Last time we took a nice look here at the Café Parisien. I'll take you back over there again. Here's another ending. Most likely used for storage. So we're going to head back this way. Here's the wine room again. We've already kind of looked in there. There's a code check, but let's go ahead out to Café Parisien. Again, this was supposed to represent a an outside restaurant 
at Paris looking out at the streets, so they were sitting like street side. A lot of the young passengers would come in here to meet and have food. Have a look so you can see aft there with the emergency door there. And for an extra cost, you could come here to dine. All passengers had included dining accommodation, so when they came in here to eat, they had to pay a little bit extra, but they could eat in the main dining saloon on D-Deck, which we won't see in this stream, but we'll see in a future stream as we go. But here is Café Parisien. I tried to get the colors as close as I could. I use a lot of um, Titanic Ship the Magnificent, Encyclopedia Britannica. There's all kinds of different things that you can look into to find resources on what these look like. I highly recommend taking a look at uh, the Titanic Honor and Glory game. They're doing a very nice 3D full up of the ship where they're really doing great research and it just looks beautiful. Back here would have been the galley for the a la carte restaurant. And it had interconnections here with, if you remember from the previous stream, the spiral stair that goes all the way up to the boat deck. They had their own stowage down below in the refrigerated cargo for their food accommodations because they were their own company. So it was separate than the average dining session. So we're going to keep moving here. Just another nice little look. I tried to be a little bit more detailed with this, and as I go, I'm decking the rooms out even more to get more detail as updates come in the game. So we're going to go ahead back this direction. And we will check out some of C-Deck today. Alright, so now let's go ahead up. We're going to go outside to begin our C-Deck tour. So I'm going to go through the smoking room, which we saw in a previous stream. As you can kind of see, you can see where I began, like look at the details on this. This is all the way back when I started the project, so all of this will still need updated to make the tables look a little bit more realistic. So I'm probably going to re, uh, rehash this room a little bit, just to kind of make it look a little more accurate. Here we're going through the rotating door through the veranda and palm court, and we're going to go back down to the aft section and begin our sea deck tour. Which would have started just about here. So looking back, this is where the third class could kind of lounge out on this promenade here on this deck. In here, we have two rooms, the third class smoking room, which is here on the right, and just a general room for the third class. So let's go ahead and have a look-see. So this would be the third class smoking saloon. I have the piano in here. It really should be in the other room, but this was the smoking room. It came with skylights so they could kind of see out up from the top there in its own little portholes. I'm getting a little stuck there because I'm in flight mode. And we're going to go ahead back through here and look in the general room where the piano would have been. And they could kind of just hang out, lounge, talk with one another, listen to some music, have some drinks and just relax here. So we're just going to continue out. All of these doors went out here. There's some on the exterior as well. We already saw that. Here we see some of the, the uh, cargo shafts here. And what I like to do is I use these little rope traps to kind of make it look like they were tied down over the top. Give it a little bit more detail. So we're going to go ahead and continue. Here we are into the second class accommodations. They're not quite as good as first class, but they're still quite nice. Here we didn't get to see this earlier. This is just the entryway from the B-deck section. Coming down, there's the aft mass that would have come down and into here. And they had a red and white tile that made up their spaces. Let's go ahead forward. This is their library the second class library. Decent accommodation and not too bad of a size. The colors probably been, would have been more of the woodwork brown looking. Coming through. Some more accommodations. Here you have their leading out to their private promenades. Well, not their private promenades, but their own promenades. And now we're into first class. Here we have a room Standard room, again, with the spacing of the decks and how I wanted to do it and where the portholes had to go. I couldn't really get it to space so that you could see the portholes nicely on the outside. So there was some creative liberty taken just 
some sacrifices to make it look decent on the exterior because that's the part everyone's really going to see. So we kind of use our imagination a little bit. Here we have a gentleman's lap. Again, it was shared in first class unless you had those parlor suite tickets, which were pretty pricey. And again, no green carpet in here. It probably most likely would have been a um, white and black tile all through here. Now we're on the sea deck portion of the aft grand staircase. This is the lowest that the aft grand staircase went. When the ship broke in two, this was a structural weak point in the ship, which is most likely why it snapped here. Here you can see we have the maids and valet saloon. They could come in here, just chow, relax, take some time away from the first class passengers to relax a little bit. And we will check out the other side. There was also a barber shop on this deck come through here. This was access for them to get easily throughout the ship. We're going to come back over to the port side now. See if we can access the barber room, which would have been right here. There were a couple of barber shops actually. There was also some for the second class passengers where they could come in and get a trim. They would also sell souvenirs in here for the kids. Uh, postcards, things like that. Just general things so that they could share their experiences aboard the White Star. So let's go ahead back out. Well, I could open and close doors properly. And these are just cabins upon cabins upon cabins. Again, it was all about space and how many tickets they could sell. It's just all furbished as much as I could. There might be a few that aren't and they get missed just simply because the ship is that massive. And we have access to both sides. And it's a mirror image on the opposite side as well. There were linen closets, made areas where they could stay. Families were both against the portholes or they would be inboard towards the keel or the center of the ship. Going to work our way this way. Here we have a coat check where they could pick up, maybe get some dry cleaning done if they so desired. Over here we have the purser's office. This is where high valuable items could be stowed temporarily until they arrived where they needed to go. This place was a total madhouse whenever it was sinking as people came up to get those private items from the purser. So they had to send the master at arms and different things just to keep a mob under control. This would have been the purser's office. We can actually kind of go in. You can see what it looks like on the inside. I have some stowage up here where they could store things for various passengers. Some little details in there in the hooks and the queue lines. Some safes and different stowage. Purser would be on the inside there. There also would have been a cabin here for them. And there we're seeing some of the staircase. We're going to work our way forward here. And you can see here's another elevator that is open. This is my other design. I think I like this one just a little bit better than the one that we had upstairs. But they could come in here. They had a lift attendant. They weren't allowed to operate it by themselves. And usually it would be the women that would take it because the gentlemen would use the stairs. But they didn't have to. Um, the elderly, it was definitely a helpful thing for them as well. We're going to take a look at some of these forward compartments. Or should I say cabins? They had their own little rooms. Again, not all of them are furbished, but you kind of get the idea of what we're going for. I would add roofing and such, except it closed up those portholes, and I really want the lights to protrude, especially at night. So I didn't really put them. But on these interiors, I will most likely throw in some more uh, ceilings and different things like that, just to add to the detail. Again, this is Minecraft, so I can only do so much in it, so I appreciate you all being patient and kind of using your imaginations on what it will look like. But I got as many cabins as close as I could to accurate, so that way you would have a nice experience. Here's some of the forward cabins. As you can see, I put in some different things, but with the update, notice that the uh, quartz kind of gets that shape to it, and it's not smooth in the other, so that was put in pre-update. Again, some more cabins here as we go forward. Going forward across. Some different rooms and such in there. I don't want to have to go into every single room for you. Here we would have had laundry, places where they could stow soiled linens or clean linens. Uh, when you look at the br blueprints, they call like toilets and things like that, water coolers and places like that. When I started, the project started with actual blueprints. I didn't start with the um, Encyclopedia Titanica or Britannica or the Titanic Ship the Magnificent. Um, so when I did this, it was originally the Olympic class 
blueprints. So I've had to make adjustments as I've gone to make it a little bit more accurate. Oh, I didn't put the automatic there. So as we move forward there, I will actually have to go to the X to show you a little bit more of the forward C deck. So let's go ahead out now. We'll just climb the staircase. You get some views as we're going up. And if there's certain spots that you folks would like to see separately or want me to do separately that you can actually have a nice little look at it, um, I'm happy to do that in maybe a future stream as we're going forward. These are live, so I can't really do much right now. I kind of have to fly through. I'm working my way to an actual computer. That way I can get you all better contented videos. Oh, I should have probably gone up a deck. So let's just fast forward. So we are on the A deck. I was supposed to be on the B deck because there's some forward doorways, but I was on A deck. So we'll go up this way and work my way out. So here we are at night, moving forward. And we're going to take a look at this part of C deck. Where the cargo holds there, we already kind of talked about that. This would have been a lamp stowage where they would have stored extra lamps, bulbs, things like that. So I just threw in as a gag a whole bunch of lamps and bulbs and torches and things like that. So it's just been an access way to stairs leading down. We'll check all of that out later whenever we check out D deck. There's a lot to it. Come across here. If you remember, we had access to the crow's nest or the forward mast through this internal compartment here. So they could literally go up there and voila, you were up at the crow's nest. Uh, they rounded it in shifts, so each of the lookouts would take their shifts. Here's a galley storage. This would have been for the cruise galley right over here, which had its own skylight. We talked about that whenever we looked at the exterior where the crew, forward crew, like firemen and things like that, could come forward and have snacks. Mostly the, the in charge or the officer. Uh, crew would use that. This is just a stair access down to another area. We'll check all that out when we do our D-Deck tours in the future. It's the same there. Here, this is just a fan stowage for the gears for fans, which would provide ventilation. This is the sailor mess hall, or the, the more less senior sailors. This is the carpenter shop, where they would have stowed wood and different tools and such so the carpenter could sound the ship and uh, make repairs as needed. He would have had his own crew as well. Here's the anchor hatch. So you can see here in the forward. So whenever I designed it, I mean, it doesn't actually function because, you know, it's Minecraft. But I tried to make it kind of look geary, like you were pushing the anchor chains, as you can see there. They would have slipped up there as well, and this would have just sent the anchors out from the two sides on the port and starboard side. There was also an anchor stowed up on the boat deck as well. So this is the anchor stowage. They would have had portholes as well. Below this would have been some crew accommodations. Over here we have the lamp primer and storekeeper. I didn't put anything in there, but you know what it is because it's there. These are where some greasers would stay. More likely the high enlisted ones. This is just a stair access port. This is the fireman's mess. So the firemen can come up and snack up, eat, have a drink, you know, do their thing there. Here we have the surgery. Now, interesting about surgery is there's a few. Uh, we had the main passenger surgery, and then we also had crew surgery, which was, this was for your firemen, your trimmers, your greasers, if anything should happen down below decks, which we will have a nice look at that later. But that's where they would have had the surgeon come forward. And the surgery was actually separate from other folks. So it wasn't in line with passengers. They had um, infectious medical rooms and things like that. They also had regular surgeon rooms. Here we have a stair access leading down. We're not going to check that out in this stream because I don't want to make this one too long. Again, this is just B and C deck. So there's a lot to it. So we'll kind of hover on the outside here and you can kind of see this is C deck there. We already saw what was on the interior, the promenade leading across the B deck where you'd have had private promenade and then the ca cabins for the passengers as they go forward. We can kind of have a look, see as we're looking through here, you can look into their rooms and see into the ports, the portholes as we work our way aft. We're pat we just passed the dining saloon there on D-Deck. 
Just kind of going forward. There's the access to Cafe Parisien. Go up and you have a little look-see in. There she is. As you see, there's a cover there over the B deck and forward A deck there. Olympic did not have that A deck cover. It was later added to Titanic because a passenger, or well, passengers were complaining of the sea breeze there, and they just thought it would be a little bit more luxurious and comfortable for them if we had that covered. So they covered it off there, just between the second and third funnels. We're going to work our way this direction. We already checked all of this out, but again, it's just a little pass through so you all can see. Thanks for bearing with me, though, because I know that this isn't the the greatest experience yet. Again, I'm working on my own personal computer so that I can actually get you better broadcasts. I can actually do editing, add some uh, copyrighted music that I don't have to get bugged for. Things like that, that you all can just enjoy the stream a little bit better. Some pop-ups, different windows, things like that. But I'm working on that. Right now, it's just I'm using the console version, and again, it's, it is what it is. So I appreciate the patience on it. So we're going to go ahead and move forward here to end the stream. Um, if you have any questions or things that you would like to see in its own video, just let me know in the comments and uh, give me a like, share, subscribe if you liked the video. If you didn't, that's cool too. I'm not going to be upset or anything like that. This is, again, for fun, for learning and things like that. I'll tell you what. I can add a little bit of bonus to this video. I'll show you some of the um, experimental projects, things that I planned on doing with the ship. And this is where I really got a gauge on what I want to put in it. And this is all going to go away once I finish adding up all the water. I'm going to probably delete all this out or just cover it. But you can kind of see how I was designing some of the boilers here. These are small versions of it because they're bigger inside the ship. I liked the look of this, but it didn't give that fire look. And just for the sound effect, I added fire on the inside. This is just to kind of give it that open look for the boilers. I'll show you those whenever we do the engine room tours. The engine rooms back to the electric cool engines are not fully completed yet just because it's extremely massive and it takes a lot of time to really do it and here I tried some different things on the back you can kind of see it progress I was experimenting with some of the colors here just to kind of get a gauge of what they look like different portholes seeing if I wanted it to be interior versus exterior look um, to be as detailed as I could you can kind of see that I started working on a reciprocating, but that's definitely not what it looks like. It looks so much better inside the ship than that. That was way early access. Here I was experimenting with different engine sounds so that when you turn it on it would do different things like pushing the bricks and stuff. It doesn't work the way I wanted it to, but um, I made it work in the actual thing. This was experimenting with the tile looks. Forward bridge kind of look there. Here you see what the end result of the funnels are going to be. It doesn't have the blacktop to it, but you can see how they're going to curve back. I was experimenting with that a little bit just to kind of get a little gauge on how I want to plan that out. Over here I was experimenting with some fine detail things with vents and um, toilets, believe it or not, because I wanted to see if I could make the toilets look a little bit better. If you like them, let me know, and um, maybe something I'll implement by itself. Right now I think it's just a... Um, a kettle and um, with a door over it like this. Um, yeah, this is whenever they first came out with the new roof tiling, where you could actually put the doors up against the roofs to make that little detail. So I was just kind of experimenting with that. This is different light experimentation to kind of see how they would look through there uh, versus lamps and things like that. So you can kind of see these are just some decoration tests. You can kind of see what I did with that. Here I actually wanted to have a little gauge of what the grand staircase would look like. This is just a miniature version. As you see on the ship, it's much bigger. This to kind of give you an idea of what it would have looked like if I used this detail. You can see kind of what the cabins look like. This is, again, supposed to represent the railing because you can't really make railing. I kind of like the way it looked. This is what all the tiling originally looked like before I laid down the carpet. So I'll probably pull up the carpets and make it look a little better like that. And I think I have a room example, a first-class room over here. So we can have a quick look at that as well. So this is what I planned on making a first class room kind of look like. See, I wanted to add the curtain look to the beds there, but still some dimension between the roof of the bed and the roof of the room. And this was an earlier placement, because you can see, again, this is like the chiseled look there. Not the chiseled, the, um, the uh, edged version, as opposed to the smooth quartz that I wanted to add up to the top. So that was kind of the experimental look. And that's where I would 
build different things just to try them out, see if I like them and such. You can see the different colors I wanted to try for the funnels. I think this one looks closest to White Star Buff because I don't like the yellow. I think the yellow wool looks yucky and I don't really like that either. So the orange kind of looks close to White Star Buff, except White Star was just a little bit more dull in its appearance. So, I mean, with Minecraft I can only do so much. So we're going to work our way this way back and probably in the stream. So again, I thank you all for your support. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. If you didn't like it, that's fine too. If you throw a dislike, I've had people do that. It doesn't bother me none. It's, it's up to you. So this is just for your enjoyment. I hope you enjoyed today and I look forward to what we get from here. Thank you and have a wonderful day.